Hi friends, I noticed this video in the what's new section of JW.org and I knew that I had to make a quick video on it because this guy, Robert Lucioni, if I'm saying that correctly, truly gets it all wrong. But listen, before we get into it, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also check the link down in the description box to my Facebook page, if you will. I would greatly appreciate it. So let's get into it. What are your convenient times. Our text for today discusses one of the temptations that Satan presented to Jesus. Uh, Luke chapter 4 and verse 13 later says that then Satan goes away to return at another convenient time to tempt Jesus. So with all that in mind, we're going to consider three questions today. Uh, number one, what were these three temptations uh, really about? Uh, number two, did Satan ever find a convenient time to come back and tempt Jesus? And three, does Satan try to use these temptations today? Well, actually, the text at Luke chapter 4, verses 13 says that he departed for a season. So I wonder from where does he get the word convenient? Convenient for whom? I'm not really sure, but let's just keep going. It says, after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he felt hungry. And the tempter approached and said to him, If you are a son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Now, our first question, what was at the root of this temptation? Well, listen, I'm going to wrap all of this up at the end of this video and show you scriptures that will explain exactly what happened with the temptation and why Jesus had to be tempted. Because, you see, he began reading in Matthew chapter 4 verse 2 but in Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 it says then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil you see Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted when he was at his weakest point after he had fasted there was a distinct reason as to why all of this occurred and this guy let me tell you he totally gets it all wrong he moves on to verse 3 claiming that the devil calls Jesus a son of God. But the scripture actually says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God. You see, there's a big difference between the two. What is a son of God? Who is a son of God? And how can a son of God forgive sins? And how can a son of God sit down at the right hand of the Father? But he was trying to get Jesus to question that he was who Jehovah said he was. Well, can you tell me where in Scripture it says that the reason Satan tempted Jesus was to get Jesus to question who Jehovah said he was? I don't see it anywhere that's really ridiculous, which is why he gives absolutely no scriptural references for that claim. If you are a son of God, why hasn't your father fed you? Can you really trust Jehovah to take care of you? See, Satan wanted Jesus to begin to question Jehovah's care and use his position to benefit himself. Did you notice the emphasis that he placed on Jesus being a son of God? That's pretty important to him. I'm wondering if this short talk has anything to do with the witnesses questioning and leaving the organization because they are friends. The numbers are not growing. The numbers are dwindling. They're just changing the way they count the numbers. Many of my viewers have asked me to do a video on why they're not opening up the Kingdom Halls and why they are continuing on with the Zoom meetings. And frankly, you know what? I don't know exactly why they're doing this, which is why I have not made a video. But what I will tell you is I know they're selling off real estate by the thousands and they're building a massive media center. So time will tell. Well, when Jesus was arrested, could that have been a convenient time? Could that have been a temptation to save himself? Or remember when he was on the stake, the rulers and the soldiers uh, taunted him and said, if you are a son of God, come on down off the stake. Interesting that they use the same terminology. Are these convenient times for uh, Satan? Uh, our families, our friends may be in need. Could we be tempted to question if we really trust that Jehovah is going to take care of them? 
uh, do we, could we be convinced or convince ourselves that we may need to take matters into our own hands? Are we ever tempted to use our privileges of service to benefit ourselves? Well, Satan was again trying to cast doubt on who Jesus was. If you are who you say you are, prove it. Let's see if Jehovah really is there for you. He does value you. He'll save you because Psalm says that's what he'll do for the real son of God. Wait a minute. I thought he said that Jesus was a son of God. And why is he putting emphasis on the word real? I wonder which Psalm he was talking about here because I really would like to look that scripture up, but he didn't tell us. Now, when might we face a similar temptation? Well, some of our brothers and sisters may feel unlovable due to events in their life. Times of isolation, depression may be convenient times uh, for those times for Satan to attack them. Am I sure Jehovah really loves me? Am I sure I'm important to Jehovah? Do I have value? Well, such feelings have caused ones to stop serving Jehovah. You see, in my opinion, this is the real purpose of this video. The governing body took the temptations of Christ out of context in an attempt to control the indoctrinated who are leaving. The governing body is losing control and they're doing what they can to keep a hold of their members. Well, we willingly make sacrifices and have made sacrifices to serve Jehovah, but we may see what others do and what others have and wonder, are our sacrifices really worth it? Is there any way I can have it now? Maybe if there's a way I can make some more money, I could do both and have the things I want. So again, the question, what are your convenient times? Uh, what are my convenient times? Uh, Satan is going to find convenient times to tempt us. That's a given. Yes, all of us are going to find times that Satan finds convenient to tempt us. But when that happens, may we be sensitive to recognize that it is a temptation and then look to Jehovah and focus on his name. And if we do, we can have the confidence that as this Psalm says, this will help, uh, Jehovah's name will help us to drive back and trample those who rise against us individually and as an organization. Let me explain what the three temptations of Christ were all about. Hebrews 4, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Scripture discusses the three temptations of Christ in great detail. 1 John 2, for all that is in the world, three things, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The three temptations were not about trusting Jehovah's care, or Jesus proving who he was. These three temptations that Jesus resisted in the wilderness mirror Adam and Eve's temptations and sin in the garden. So let me show you Genesis chapter three. On the bottom it says, and when the woman saw that, number one, the tree was good for food, and that, number two, it was pleasant to the eyes, and number three, a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave unto her husband with her as he and he did eat. You see the three temptations were in the Garden of Eden. Now let's take a look at the three temptations of Jesus. Down at the bottom, temptation number one, Jesus was led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was very hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. There is the lust of the flesh. In verses five and six in green, you'll see there at the bottom it says, the devil claimed, throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple and in green he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time you shall dash your foot against a stone. There you have it, the lust of the eyes, friends the awesome and spectacular saving of the Savior of the world by the angels of God. 
Next in verses eight and nine, the devil shows him all the kingdoms of the world and down at the bottom in purple, all these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. This is the pride of life, friends. The devil showed up when Jesus was at his weakest. You see, God sent Jesus into the world to be the redeemer and the savior of all mankind. Jesus was going to be tested the entire length of his ministry, so he had to be tempted in these three areas. You see, Jesus, after all, is the most awesome redeemer, preacher, healer, and savior. Listen, friends, do you know what Jesus was doing in the wilderness for 40 days? He was fasting. And when somebody fasts, they refrain from physical food to focus more on spiritual food. So they fast and they pray. People spend time in prayer to become closer to God when they fast. They rely on him for that spiritual nourishing food. You see, Jesus was praying to the Father the whole time he was in the wilderness. He was having unending, continual communication with God the Father while, they, while he was there. He was relying on the Father for the nourishment that he needed to continue on because he knew what was going to happen to him in the future. Do you think Jesus had any doubt who he was? God the Father was preparing him not only to be physically tortured, which is what happened, but what is worse than that is to take on the sins of all, humani of all humanity in his body. That's what he did for you and me, friends. It was an awesome time in the wilderness listening to the Father. Jesus knew who he was. Satan used the same temptations on Eve, but she succumbed or gave in fell for his lies, whereas Jesus resisted. If Satan could lure Jesus into ignoring God's will, then Jesus would have been disqualified as the redeemer of mankind. And God's plan for mankind's redemption through the sinless Son of God would have been foiled. Satan was saying, look, set up your kingdom now instead of going through the pain and suffering which you know you're going to have to face. There's a scripture at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 44 through 49, which compares Adam as the first Adam to Jesus as the second Adam. The first Adam failed. The second Adam, Jesus, was completely victorious. The devil is subject to Jesus. The devil has no control over Jesus. The devil has no control over the followers of Jesus. So listen, here's what you need to know from this. When Jesus was tempted, he answered the devil with scripture. So when you're tempted, whatever your temptations may be, gossiping, lying, immorality, anger, then you go to the Bible and you look up those words and you, you heed the advice in the Bible. It's simple. It's a very, very simple way to thwart the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen, you don't want to listen to this guy on JW.org because he's not teaching you the word of God. He's teaching you Jehovah's Witness doctrine. I've showed it to you from the word of God. We know exactly what those three temptations were all about. Pick it up and read it, friends, because you know what? Jehovah did not die for you, but Jesus died for you. Put your faith and trust in him today. He is the truth. He's not the way to the truth. Jesus is the truth. That's it, friends. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So that's all I have to say on this video today. I hope you found it encouraging and hope you 
learn from it and have a few takeaways. Thank you so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, friends, and I hope you have a great day.